D-Lo, ay, yeah, clutch. I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch. You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck, your ship is just sunk, we turn off a way. Ooh, yeah, see that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch! What's going on, clutch? What? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Duck, it's your boy Ross, and we're in the clutch. Hey, hey. back to ladies and gentlemen, another visit today, you feel me? This abandoned mine footage was very creepy. We're in the month of October, man, so you know we're gonna be checking out some creepy stories Boy. and creepy videos for you guys all month Boy. long, so make sure you stay tuned, and uh, if you have some creepy videos you want us to check out, y'all know what to do. Hit us uh, up on Instagram, Twitter, or send the link down in the comment section down below. Yep. Shout out to Mr. Ballin for always providing the creepy content, Ballin. even when it's not in the month of October, there's always right. like some creepy videos he's able to narrate and actually, uh, you know, he's good at telling the story, painting the picture for you, so. Nah, he's, he's one of the best that mm -hmm. I've seen. Uh, another creepy thing is I'm see-through. You said what? Look through my chest, you can see through me. I'm a spirit. I'm sorry, y'all. Of the woo. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. That's um, crazy. He, he didn't catch on to it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, he kind of let me sit there. But that's all right. We're going to get into this right now, man. Today, I'm going to share the story behind one of the creepiest videos on the internet. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story <laughs> format, you come to the right place because that's all we do. And we upload be two or three times shot. every week. So if that's of interest to you, <laughs> please go here. to the like button's house. And as soon going? as the like button sits mm -hmm. down, to watch home. their favorite TV Bobby show, start real. violently vacuuming right in front of the TV. Also, <laughs> please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly. Y'all go support him. Yeah, right, let's get Mr. into Bobby today's man. story. Yes. Got a rocky set to get you. Important mind video. In the summer of 2013, a middle-aged man named Frank pulled into a tiny Hi, town Frank. in Nevada called Frank. Kingston. Kingston, which is home to less than 100 people year-round, is so small That's and crazy. desolate and cut off from the rest of the state and really the rest of the country that they don't even have stoplights. It's basically just a collection of a handful of buildings like a laundromat and a saloon wow. that are surrounded on one side by the huge mountain days. range and on the other just open desert. At the time, there were really only two reasons you would find yourself in Kingston, Nevada. One, if you lived there or were visiting someone that lived there. Or two, if you were going to visit the abandoned mines up in the mountain that are right near Kingston. Frank was in Kingston for the latter. For the last five years, Frank had been traveling all Whoa. over Nevada and California and just the West Coast in general, exploring abandoned mines. And he would film himself while he was in there. And then when he got back to his house, he would upload the footage to his YouTube channel. When he arrived in Kingston, Frank had already uploaded 302 videos to his channel. Damn. But despite the very high number of videos on his channel, his channel was still very, very small and it wasn't growing really at all. So for him to be dedicating that much time and energy into making these videos indicated that he wasn't really doing it for YouTube fame. He was doing it because he had a passion for exploring these mines and he wanted to share it with the few people that subscribe to his channel. You're and when you alone. look through the first 302 videos on his channel, that passion of his really comes through. He always knows the history of the mine he's about to go into and when he goes inside if he finds machinery or pieces of equipment that have been left behind he immediately knows what they are and he speaks about them with relative Damn. sophistication he has this lingo that sounds like he understands minds on a really granular level so when frank arrived That's in crazy. kingston in 2013 as far as we know, the only reason he was there was just to do what he always did, which is go explore a couple of cool mines, film it, and then put it on his channel. Except this time, Frank's adventure into these mines right outside of Kingston would be cut short by something he just could not explain. However, he captured it on film, oh and it's terrifying. Oh the two shit. mines that Frank was intending to visit were the oh Victorine shit. Mine and the Horton Mine. The I'm Horton ready. Mine was constructed <laughs> first in the late it. 1970s, early <laughs> 1980s and when they built it they expected it to be a gold mine but there was no gold inside so they constructed another mine about 900 feet above where the entrance to the Horton mine was they built this other mine and inside of that mine 
there was gold. This mm. second mine they built was called the Victorine Mine. When they built the Victorine Mine, they bored this massive hole right outside the entrance to the Victorine Mine that went straight down 900 feet directly into the mountain. And this big hole they drilled went right into the Horton Mine. This Damn. was on purpose. They were basically building the equivalent of a laundry chute, except instead of tossing laundry down it, they would toss the ore they drilled from inside the Victorine Mine. They would drop it down the chute. It would fall 900 feet all the way to the Horton Mine and that would save them from needing to carry all of this ore all the way down the mountain. Basically, it was a shortcut for the ore. And in the Horton Mine, they built this huge conveyor belt system so that anything that came off of the chute would land at the beginning of this conveyor belt, mm -hmm. and it would get brought yeah, all the, the way system. outside, outside yeah. of the mine, where workers could process it and bring it to town. Finally, in 1989, the Victorine Mine ran out of gold, so they permanently shut down that mine as well as the Horton Mine. These two mines were located about four miles to the west of Kingston's town center. And so when Frank pulled into town, he moved to the western side of town and then found the access road that would bring him out to these mines. And so he just drove on this road that basically shot straight towards this huge mountain range. And after traveling about four miles, he reached this very sharp right turn that basically went straight up a mountain. And at this point, there's no more pavement on the road. It's a very narrow trail. It's hard to see. And so Frank would have parked his car, grabbed his camera and his equipment, and begun walking up this mountain. After quite a while, Frank would have passed a couple of run-down old cabins that were kind of overgrown. These cabins were used when these mines were in operation. They helped service the workers while they were out there. But since the mines were abandoned, so too were the cabins. And so when Frank got to these cabins, that would have meant he was was very close to the entrance to both of these mines. Frank first went to the Victorine mine, which would have been very easy to spot because right outside of its small entrance was this huge piece of what looked like scaffolding. And that was actually the opening to this huge chute that shot down 900 feet to the Horton mine below. So Frank goes to the Victorine mine and he has a look around, but either Frank didn't film his time inside of the Victorine mine, or he just didn't upload it because there's no video of him actually going into the Victorine mine. Mm. His camera is turned on this particular day when he's left the Victorine mine and he's walked all the way down to the entrance of the Horton mine. And so we see this video, it opens up with the camera pointing at the entrance to the Horton mine. Damn. And the entrance to the Horton mine is very bizarre looking. The yeah. entrance, which is 20 feet tall, has all these long strips of metal plating that have been kind of anchored up all around the entrance to prevent the entrance from caving in on it. Itself. But despite whatever functional value these copper plates might have had, the aesthetic result is very creepy and makes you yep. not want to go in the entrance. For also, sure. because this mine had been shut down, there's a big gate right in front of this already very foreboding entrance that warns people to not go inside. But Frank seems yeah. totally unaffected Always by a this warning. and just <laughs> strolls right up to the entrance of Horton Mine and he kind of talks about its history and then he calmly steps over this warning <laughs> gate telling people to stay back and he begins walking into this mine right away frank notices there's quite a bit of water on the ground and that's cause for concern okay we can go in here and just take a quick look i don't think i'm going to explore this particular mine there's a little bit too much water in, in here and uh i know this mine is really old but uh i just don't think it's wise to go in here when there's water try to avoid this if i can Frank's not concerned that there is water. It's that the water might be stagnant water. In these abandoned mines, there can be poisonous gases that accumulate. Oh. And when there is stagnant water, those gases get absorbed into mm. the stagnant water. And so if Frank were to step into one of those puddles of water, he would release those gases oh, from the water, shit. the so-called bad air, oh, and that can actually wow. be deadly. But as Frank is standing there wondering that. if he <laughs> should proceed, huh? he looks down off to the left side right That's inside the true. entranceway and he notices there's some footprints so somebody uh -oh. must have come in here recently and so frank decides you know what i'll go a little bit further in i'll just be really careful of the water Frank makes it about 10 feet inside of the entranceway when he lifts his camera up and he looks straight down into the mine and you get your first look at really what the inside of oh, this shit. mine looks like. And right away, you notice there's this yellow kind of collapsed looking tubing that's hanging down from the ceiling and that's the old
old air filtration system. And then when Frank moves maybe another five or 10 feet farther into the mine, you see in addition to this air filtration system, there's also all these metal chains that are just kind of dangling from the ceiling and they're all over the place. And both the tubing and the chains seem to extend all the way into the tunnel out of view. Those chains were previously used to hold up the conveyor belt mm. that stretched the entire distance of this mine, which is 600 feet long. Mm. They held that conveyor belt up, which carried all of the ore from the chute out of the mine. Even though Frank has seen similar setups in other mines he's been into, he would say on camera that there's just something really off about this mine, that it was really sketching him out, and he wasn't really sure if he should keep going. Yeah, this looks pretty uh, mm -hmm. sketchy. I'll go a few feet further in and check that's, it out. But I think I'm going to pass on this one. <laughs> he would later reflect. So I'm telling on that you, hey, oh no, me. Inside of the mine, mm -hmm. and he would say, you know, it felt like there was somebody else in that mine mm -hmm. watching him. It was just very, very uncomfortable. And so, as Frank is debating whether or not he should continue, just based mm -hmm. on the kind of bad vibe he was getting, he looks down and notices there's actually running water now. Before at the entrance, it was stagnant, but now he can see the water inside of this mine. It's not stagnant; it's running, and so the risk of breathing in any bad air is pretty much gone, meaning this mine is relatively safe. But despite this supposedly positive development for someone who wanted to explore a mine, Frank is still not sure if he should continue. Something's telling him don't do it. This is one of the uh, creepiest mine tunnels uh, I've ever uh, been in, just because of how uh, dilapidated it is and all these chains hanging down mm -hmm. from the overhead and there's a shot looking down the tunnel even further of it. Mm -mm. He buys it, so. But despite his apprehension, Don't Frank ultimately oh. decides, you know what, he'd come this far, I'll just go a little bit farther. <laughs> and so Frank makes it to about 100 feet into this mine Jesus. when he turns around and he films the opening, the entrance to the mine, which is all lit up with sunlight. And he films it kind of to give the audience a sense of just how far he had come into the mine. And so then after filming the entrance, he turns the camera and he films back down towards the back of the mine, towards the actual end of the mine. Now, at first, you don't see anything unusual. You just see the chains, and it looks kind of like it had for the first couple of minutes of this video, but then Frank pulls his flashlight out, oh, and he Lord. shines it down the hall. Oh, Lord. Looking down ready? the tunnel here. You getting ready? Hell nah. Oh, yeah. It's hard, oh, man. hell nah. Time to go. Hey, yo. Time to go. I would have never been in there, but it's really hey, time to go. Hey, yo. N what? You can't say it's wind doing that. I don't know why that one chain is swinging right, right there. Nah, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, it's time to go. <clears throat> yeah. As we saw, Frank's initial oh, reaction <laughs> to this swinging chain is speechlessness. Yeah. And then just sort of this weird statement of fact that he's like, I don't know how that chain is swinging. And then after staring at this chain and even zooming in on it, trying to kind of figure mm -hmm. out what he's looking at, right. Frank eventually would just turn off his camera, turn around and leave yeah. very quickly. This, this, this and when it. he got back to his house, he uploaded this video to his channel with virtually no context. He just said, you know, this is what I saw inside of the Horton mine and nothing happened. It didn't go viral. It isn't like everybody went crazy when they saw this footage. Instead, I think his audience, they saw this video and didn't really know what to make of it. And then very quickly, his audience and Frank just kind of forgot about it. And Frank got back into making his kind of traditional videos. Then about a year later, the YouTube algorithm kind of noticed this Horton mine mm, footage that YouTube he had uploaded algorithm. back in 2013, mm. and it went crazy viral. Damn. And immediately this video was put under the microscope by YouTube personalities, by TV personalities. I mean, everybody was just kind of taken aback by this footage. And what was determined fairly early on was the actual video itself was authentic. Frank really did film a swinging chain in the Horton mine in Nevada. The question became, who swung the chain? Yeah. There are many people that believe Frank swung the chain, and this is all just one big hoax, and they point to some of his newer videos after this video went viral, where it appears that Frank is kind of actively going out to find paranormal activity versus just going out and exploring mines. And so they point to that and say, look, he's looking for this stuff. This can't be authentic. This video has to be fake. But others know, say, man. look, Frank is just a guy who likes going into mines and yeah, he films the inside of these mines. He's been doing it 
for years and years, and he just happened to be in one when something unexplainable happened, and he happened to catch it on film. And the only reason he began kind of actively looking for paranormal activity after it went viral yeah. is because kind of overnight, his channel exploded. Well, yeah. and he suddenly yeah, had hundreds and hundreds of thousands That's of awesome, subscribers man. that all came from that swinging chain video, and they all wanted the same thing. More swinging yeah. chain videos, <laughs> so more why, paranormal why content. Of course he's going and so to seeing a huh? great opportunity, Frank went out and began looking for paranormal content. Making That's money, why Frank, most of his bro. videos after that video where the swinging chain happened Dude, are kind of geared towards fishing for that kind of stuff. But that first video, that swinging chain yeah, video, God, there God. wasn't really a good incentive for Frank to yeah. fake it at the time he uploaded it. Obviously now you can say, oh, well, you know, he staged it because he wanted it to go viral and he I'm wanted to become to famous and then that. have this great YouTube right. career. Look, it's all, it's all in front of us. It's so obvious. But how could Frank have possibly predicted that that video would go viral? Right. Mm -hmm. Going viral is so hard and it happens so rarely Facts. and it's nearly impossible to predict. Yeah. And so how could Frank, who had uploaded hundreds and hundreds of videos before, and Just none know, of them had yeah. come anywhere yeah. near virality, how could he have said this one, mm -hmm. this is gonna go viral? It's just such a long shot. It also seems very uncharacteristic for Frank to have been diligently uploading on this YouTube channel, which was basically a passion project, yeah. for five years. He's <laughs> uploaded 302 That's a videos, lot of videos, and all of them are the same. He's posting the same type yeah. <laughs> of content very consistently for the same small, loyal following, and then out of left field, he uploads his ghost video with yeah. no context. Even if he was trying to go viral with this video, he would have known that the most likely outcome would be that the video did not go viral, and instead his small loyal following that was used to a particular type of content would see this video and be like, huh, why did he upload that? Or worse, they would think, is he faking this? Is this a hoax? And if so, that would totally tarnish his reputation and he'd lose mm -hmm. probably some of his precious few subscribers. Yeah, I mean, it just didn't feel loyal. like the juice was worth the squeeze. But yeah. regardless, even though lots and lots of people have said, you're lying, Frank, you're lying, Frank, you're lying, Frank. Of course. He said, I'm not lying. I was in the Horton mine. I filmed what I filmed. It's up to you what you believe. So that's going to do it, guys. If hey, you found man, a secret man. in today's episode, let that us... That was definitely creepy, bro. Yeah, no, that's, was... that's something you can't really explain. Yep. I ain't going to ask no questions. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and get the fuck up out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still at the gate where it said don't enter or caution. I'm straight. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's... man. Hey, Frank. You, you love you some minds, man. More Be safe out you, there, bro. Frank. Keep for doing sure. your thing. <laughs> it's not yeah. for me. Not you know me. what I'm saying? I, I can watch from the comfort of my home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I'm, <laughs> hey, you know, you got somebody for, you know, everybody into their own things. So yeah, facts, facts, facts. I'm fact, not going to knock you. But if y'all enjoyed the video, man, you already know what to do. Make sure you want to like, subscribe. Shout out to Mr. Paulin again for always putting together mm -hmm. some dope commentary with the videos and uh, just storytelling in general, bro. He, he kills it. Facts. So make sure you keep up running with the like, subscribing. Continue to spread love, be love. Keep God first. Catch y'all in the next video. Peace out. Already. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.